Com. I'm Evan Rinn, and this is the Capital Farm Credit Wednesday Night Podcast, our weekly look at the big country athletic scene, what happened last week, what's going on this week. I'm here with my partner, Dan Youngblood. And Dan, we begin a brand new football season tonight with video podcasts. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, it's an exciting time, especially given with uh, uh, everything that we went through during the summer with uh, COVID and everything else. I mean, it's been such a, a hectic uh, last several months. It's nice to be able to look forward to, to Thursday, really. That's when we really get going. And then Friday, a full slate of games. So it's nice to be talking about football right now. I'm, I'm really, again, we talked about this before, but I'm really grateful to the UIL for giving these kids a chance to play. I, I'm glad that uh, things look like they're go, going forward. Uh, we've, we've had kids practicing now for a couple of weeks with no major issues that, that we know of. So uh, I'm, I just got to say uh, I'm, I'm really proud right now of, of what all the teams and coaches have done to get us to this point. And I'm excited to, to see what uh, what this season holds because, I, I, I mean, you're always excited this time of year, but I think there's probably a little bit more anticipation just given everything we've been going through with the, with the, with the virus and everything else. Absolutely. And at this point – uh, knock on wood, knock on wood. I'm, I'm very happy to see that everybody's hard work hasn't gone to waste because everybody worked really hard over the summer, including you and I, uh, to get ready for the season. And we were dreading the possibility of just, you know, doing a whole bunch of work for nothing. And I'm just really gratified to see, you know, opening kickoff getting underway this week. Yeah. And, I, and I, like I said before, I think the coaches and players deserve a whole lot of credit because I think there probably were some people that, that doubted their ability to get even to this point, to get to ki- the ki- uh, opening kickoff and to without, you know, you know, major catastrophe. And they've, they've done that. And that's one thing I was really pleased with. And like I said, even proud uh, of, of the coaches in our area, the ones that we've kind of been following that have really, I think, taken this very seriously and kind of taken it upon themselves uh, to kind of get us to this point. They understand their role in, in making this season happen. And I'm, I'm really excited uh, with the job they've done. And I, I look forward to seeing, you know how the rest of the season goes, and it probably and, and, and like I've seen some some tweets about it, and it's probably not going to go without a hitch. There will be some you know some some hiccups here and there, but I think that uh, the commitment level to making this happen and to doing what's right uh, is something I think we can really be happy about, and that's something that especially in this time with everything going on all over the world, it's nice to see a concerted effort, people working together to make something good happen, and I think that uh, we're all really excited to be kicking off on. Like I said, Thursday, and then everybody kicking off on Friday. Before we go any farther, we need to thank our primary sponsor, Capital Farm Credit, with offices all over Texas, including Stanford and Abilene. Buy your own slice of Texas with Capital Farm Credit. Together, we're better. And Dan, one thing I want to thank everybody for is the terrific response. It's we actually set uh, uh, records on our website for traffic. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the tremendous response we got for our preseason preview. Uh, it, we put a lot of effort into that, and I thought the the response was over the top. Yeah, I was really excited about that. I know that you and I put in a lot of work to get to that point, over 80 stories, uh, features, previews, columns, just getting ready for the season and kind of previewing the season as best we could. And I was, I was also really excited about the response we got. We had a lot of people uh, check in on the site on that. And we've had a bunch more come on uh, since we put out our, our preseason position rankings. And there's been, uh, it seems like a lot of excitement uh, kind of universally for this season. I know there have been a lot of people, it's been hard to go this long without high school sports. I know there are a lot of people that are excited to, to get them going. And, and that certainly includes us. And uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, to, to have that many people on our site uh, reading the preview stuff, uh, I think like you was very gratifying as well to, 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 to put in that work and then see it appreciated. I think that, that you and I both uh, got a kick out of that. And one of the new facets of our weekly podcast this year during the football season, we're going to be going through the top area games of the week. And we're going to show you what our picks are. And we're also going to show what the consensus picks are from our Twitter polls that we post every week. Now, granted, those can change between now and game night because those polls don't close until Thursday. But we will include your area picks uh, from our Twitter polls, at least at the time of the of the podcast. But before we do that, we need to thank some more of our sponsors, beginning, of course, with Capital Farm Credit, who brings you these Wednesday night podcasts free of charge throughout the year. Also, for the love of the game broadcasting, our old friend Terry Slavens, owner of K-Lakes, 93.5 FM out of Breckenridge, K-A-T-X, 97.7 FM out of Eastland, K-R-O-O, 1430 AM out of Breck, and 98.5 K-W-B-Y FM out of Ranger. That is for the love of the game 
Broadcasting. Also, Phil Hill of the Abilene Realtors Group, big supporter of local athletics. If you're in the market, give Phil a call at 325-669-5153 or visit his website at philhillproperties.com. And finally, the Four Sand Oil Patch Cafe. In every small town in the Bay Country, there's always that place where people say that's the place to go and eat. Well, in Four Sand, it is the Oil Patch Cafe. Big supporters of the Four Sand Buffaloes. Once again, the Four Sand Oil Patch Cafe. And with that, Dan, it is time to jump into this week's football games. There's a whole bunch of them. I'm excited to jump out there. Uh, the last one that we'll pick will be this week's Bay Country Game of the Week, and that's going to be Wall at Eastland. We'll get to that last. And with that, Dan, it's time to jump into this week's football games. Let's start with a couple of Thursday night games. One, a six-man game. We've got Ira at Jayton. This is a big matchup. And looking at the Twitter poll that we've got up right now, we've got a 55%, 55.3% of our respondents out of more than 100 votes have taken the Jayton Jaybirds to win. How do you see this one? Yeah, I think I'm going to agree with the uh, with the audience on that one. I think it should be a very good game, first of all. And you've got two teams that both are expecting really strong seasons this year, uh, despite the fact that both have, have suffered some significant graduation losses, some guys who have been really big parts of that program for multiple years. But I think you're going to see uh, two very good teams on the field Thursday night, and uh, I'm going to go with Jayton. I think that they've just got a little bit more firepower. Okay, I'm going to go against the trend. I'm going to take the Ira Bulldogs to win. I think that uh, graduation is going to hurt Jayton a little bit more than it hurt Ira. Ira has a tendency to uh, just roll with the punches after big graduation losses and uh, just reload. And I expect Ira to reload once again this year. I'm going to take the Bulldogs on the road in an upset. And from there, from the six-man game, we're going to move to another game on Thursday. And this is our, our first 11-man game of the season. We've got a rivalry game in a neutral site in Big Spring with Cahoma and Forsan facing off. That's always a fun matchup. It's always played the first week of the season. A lot of times it's the first game of the season for us. Uh, who do you see winning that one? You know, uh, I, I really believe in this Four Sand football team this year. I, I like what they've got back. I, you know, they're going to be strong up front. They've got some good skill people. I think this is going to be one of the better Four Sand teams that we've seen uh, in the last few years. And I think that Cahoma is going to have – uh, a lot of question marks. Again, a, a lot of young players coming up, and the lo the loss of Zach Schneider is big. I'm curious to see how they're going to you know to to compensate for that loss. I like Four Sand to win. Yeah, I like Four Sand as well, but I'm really bullish on both these teams. Honestly, I think Four Sand uh, with with everything they've got back and the maturity that those young guys have have kind of that process that they've gone through. I think this Four Sand team has a chance to really be the breakout team of the big country this year. But I think Cahoma is going to be better than a lot of people think. They did suffer significant graduation losses, including Schneider and some of those other seniors who were really instrumental in kind of getting that program to where it is right now. But I, I think this Cahoma team has enough off that team and enough really strong senior leaders and, and, and a couple of juniors in that mix as well that I think that they're still going to be very competitive. So I think it's going to be a really good football game. But I'm giving Forstan the slightest of edges just because I think they bring back a little bit more uh, – uh, experience and in this rivalry game it's it's generally close anyway so I think it's going to be a, a game that will be will be close and I think Forsan will find a way to win it late. All right right now and as of this moment our our Twitter poll has uh, Cahoma as the pick at 48.2 percent so the, the the general public right now has Cahoma as a very slight favorite Forsan at 47.9 percent Cahoma at 48.2 but nonetheless Cahoma gets the check mark from our Twitter poll. So that's uh, that, that's the pick for uh, our two games on Thursday night. One that should be interesting, in my opinion, uh, Crawford at Goldthwaite. I think that uh, on paper, this one looks like one where maybe Crawford's a relatively heavy favorite. But this Goldthwaite team did some mat maturing last year, has a lot of kids back. It's going to be the second year in Coach Verdell's system. How do you see this one playing out? Well, first off, our Twitter poll on this one, it's, it's closer than I thought. Uh, I really thought that uh, Crawford would be a heavy favorite just on, on reputation alone, uh, you know, over the last few years. But it's fairly close. Crawford is indeed the pick at 51.4%. Goldthwait getting 46.7% of the respondents so far, and that's after uh, 210 votes. So Crawford is the pick. And frankly, I do agree uh, with uh, the Twitter poll at this point. I do think that Crawford is going to, to win that football game. However, I, I like what Goldthwaite uh, has coming back. I think they're going to be a little bit better than what people are expecting. Uh, I think that uh, Coach burdell has got uh, that system in place now. They're going to be able to control clock, keep games close. Uh, this is going to be a good football game. 
I agree. I think we're pretty much on the same page on this one. I think that, that Crawford is the favorite. I, I will pick Crawford to win. But I think it'll be a low-scoring game, a competitive game. Crawford was a team that was kind of defensively led last year. Anyway, their offense was, was a little bit behind their defense. Goldthwaite plays a style that tries to keep scores low. I think you're going to see a really hard-fought, low-scoring game that Crawford wins by, by maybe 7, 10-point range. And it'll, I think it'll be a good game. I think it'll be a good experience for both teams. Okay, we're still in Class 2A here. We've got another game uh, in Holly. Uh, the Roscoe Plowboys are going to be heading out to Holly to face really a monstrous Holly football team. Even though Holly got hurt by a graduation up front and losing Colton Marshall, I still think that this is going to be uh, one of the, the top football teams in this region in Class 2A D1. I like Holly big. Yeah, I mean, I think this, yeah, I think this is going to be a tough game for Roscoe, but I do think it's an interesting one for both teams in that Holly will be playing uh, without several of the guys that were big players for him last year. So they're going to have to kind of adjust to uh, some new personnel, particularly at that running back position. And then for Roscoe, I think that they've got uh, pretty high expectations for this year. This is going to be an opportunity for them to test themselves really early. I tend to agree. I think that, that, that this will probably be too much of a test for them this early in the season, but uh, I, I think it'll be a valuable experience for both teams as well. Well, that, that Roscoe football team, in my opinion, is going to be a playoff team and they're going to be better. I want to qualify my statement, but uh, this is going to be an improved Roscoe football team. But Holly is a Division I team and one of the best in the region. And by the way, the Twitter poll right now has Holly as an 81.1% favorite. So a big pick there also. Yeah, I think one of the big things that, that, uh, that makes Holly a big favorite in this game is, is size. Holly's got some really big offensive linemen, some guys that can really uh, move guys. And, and Roscoe is not a real big football team. I think that's going to put them at a fairly severe disadvantage. So I tend to agree with you. I think that, that this is one where it's just kind of a mismatch. But uh, like I said before, this will be a good opportunity for Roscoe to test themselves early. And I think it will be a good, a good opportunity for Holly to kind of start putting things together with some new personnel. All right, right staying class, class 2A, we've got uh, an interdivisional matchup. Two class 2A teams, Stanford D1, Hamlin D2. Starting with the, the Twitter poll, Hamlin, pretty much a big favorite. at 64.4%. That is the, the pick of the public. But there's something that's noteworthy about this poll. There was a lot of excitement uh, about this football game in both communities. This is, this is more or less a rivalry game. These towns are really close to each other. And we had nearly, at least at the time of this podcast, we've got nearly 600 responses to this poll. Nearly 600. Uh, plus a little bit of smack talk uh, online uh, over this. So this is going to be an intense football game. I still view Hamlin based on what they've got coming back from last year as a, as a substantial favorite. And I agree with the Twitter poll. I do too. I think that uh, that Hamlin will win this one probably by a couple of scores. But uh, I think this is another one. It's funny. We have a lot of these games that I think are, are interesting for different reasons. Uh, and, and this is one of those where I think it's kind of like the last one we just talked about. Hamlin's going to have to really replace a couple of, of big time personnel losses uh, at the running back position on the defensive line. So you're going to get to see an opportunity for this Hamlin team to kind of start gelling with with a new group. But they also have, like you said, enough guys back from last year's team that you expect them to still be very, very good. And then for Stanford, they're basically replacing all of their skill talent. So you're going to see a lot of new guys stepping in there. But one thing that, that is worth mentioning is that, that Coach Casey over there is really excited about his quarterback, uh, Sean Holden. So this is an opportunity for him to finally be a starter. He's waited his turn. Uh, I think he likes some of those, those skill guys he's got, but it's going to be a, a time for, for some of those young guys to prove that they can kind of fill those roles as the playmakers for Stanford. And uh, it doesn't get much harder uh, in the first week of the season to try to do that against a Hamlin. All right, moving on to Class 2A, we've got Haskell at Quana. At this point, the Twitter poll has Haskell at an 80.1% pick to win that football game. That's a huge pick right there with more than 200 votes in. And I will say this, I agree that Haskell is definitely the favorite there in my pick here. I like this Haskell football team. I think they might sneak up on some people. If you, get, if you, if you take a really good look at that roster, this is the largest Haskell team that we've seen in years, they have a substantial amount of size. I think they get a little bit more depth. If they get good quarterback play and can run the ball, Haskell's going to surprise some people. I think it's a playoff team. 
Yeah, I agree with basically everything you just said right there. And I think that the, the big key will be that quarterback position. They lost a couple of playmakers, and, and one of those was at the quarterback position. So they're going to have to have somebody step in there. I think they will have enough to get this game, uh, take care of this game, take care of Quan and, and start off 1-0. and And I think if they can build some momentum, they're going to be an interesting team in what I think is a pretty tough district. So they're moving up to, to D1 this year. So that should be fun to watch. But I do think that they've got a team that can, they can handle that transition, and it's going to be uh, interesting to see how they do starting with this game in week one. All right, staying in Class 2A, the Cross Plains Buffaloes will be playing host to Menard. And right now, the Twitter poll has Cross Plains as a 68.7% favorite. Uh, I agree with that. I like this Cross Plains team. This is going to be perhaps the best Cross Plains team that we've seen in the last four or five years, Dan. Yeah, yeah. And I think that this this first matchup is one where I think they, they would uh, be considered pretty heavy favorites. I think that the Twitter poll got this one right. I think this Cross Plains team's got a lot – of speed. It's going to be a very fast team. The one thing about them is they're not very big, so that could uh, put them at a disadvantage in certain matchups, but I don't think that this first game against Menard is going to be one of those. The one real interesting thing about this game, I think, will be to see how Kaysen Allen does in his first game as the quarterback. Uh, Allen has proven himself as a playmaker both on the offensive and defensive side in the, in the past, but that has previously been at the running back position. This year, he's taken over at quarterback, and it'll be fun to watch just kind of how that first game goes, because this is a guy who's not done a whole lot of throwing uh, at the varsity level. The, the, so I think that's going to be his biggest challenge. But uh, I think you're going to see him make plays because that's what he does. And uh, the, the, in this first game, I think will be very beneficial for him just to kind of get his feet wet, feet wet, get rid of some of those nerves, and then kind of uh, move on throughout the season. Because I think by the end of the season, you're going to see uh, a pretty good transition to that position. All right, staying in Class 2A, El Dorado is going to be visiting San Saba. And, and the San Saba football team at home is always going to be tough. But they've got uh, – I think San Sab has got something to prove with, uh, with O'Keefe graduating, with Salinas graduating. Some people are speculating that they might take a step down. And who, who knows, maybe they will. But I think they've got something to prove. And I think they come out uh, like gangbusters. And I think they're a huge favorite to top El Dorado in the silver. Yeah, and I tend to agree. I think San Sab will win this one probably comfortably. But El Dorado is not a bad football team. I got to see them last year against Haskell. They've got a little bit of talent. But this San Saba team, even though they did lose some big-time playmakers in O'Keefe and Salinas, still bring back some big ones as well. Uh, Ridge and Shahan got a chance to, to, to mix in there at quarterback last year. He's going to take over full-time this year. Uh, I mean, they've got some guys that are really, really good players. So I, I'm Excited to see what this team can finish the season with a ma massive district clash against Cisco. So that, that's kind of one that you kind of see on the horizon that you'll kind of be paying attention to all year. And it'll be fun to see kind of how this San Saba team gets started. Because I do think you're right. I think there is kind of a chip on the shoulder of that program to prove that, that it wasn't just a two-year fluke based on a couple of, of big-time talents, that they've built a program on that strength and conditioning uh, program that uh, that will be able to sustain this level of success. And this is kind of their, their first big test uh, for that. Well, having been in that uh, that gym, that weight room of theirs, that's and and watch them work out. That's an impressive uh, system that they've got going there. They they take their weight training very seriously in San Saba. It is fun to watch. It's fun to watch. Uh, and after 216 votes at this point, San Saba is an 86.1 percent favorite by the public to win that football game. Uh, let's take a look at a Class 3A matchup, Dan. Uh, San Angelo TLCA at Brady. I view this one as, frankly, a, you know, no offense, but it just is. I think that it's going to be a mismatch. I like Brady big. I agree, and I think this is going to be a good, uh, a good matchup for Brady because they're another team that is replacing a lot of really important senior players that graduated offseason. And I think this is an opportunity for them to kind of tune up, to kind of get a little bit of confidence because I think this Brady team, has the, has the uh, opportunity to, to surprise some people. They did lose some big-time playmakers when you think about guys like Walker Bauer and the Galindo Twins and several others. But they've got a really big offensive line back. They're, they're bigger than they've been in the past. And they've got some playmakers behind those guys and on the edges, Park, uh, uh, Parker Leonard being the big one on the, at the wide receiver position, that, that I think that they're going to have a, a team that can still compete, will, will still be a playoff team. And this, I think, is a great matchup for them just to kind of, you know, shake loose any cobwebs, come together a little bit. Because I think once that this team does gel, you're going to see a very competitive team over there in Brady. All right. Also in Class 3A, the Breckenridge Buckaroo is going to be heading out to Jacksboro. This is going to be a tough road swing. The Twitter poll that we've got up right now has more than 220 votes. And Breck is the pick at 61.2%. Uh, perhaps the, uh, the, the, the area favorite there. We've got a lot of big country fans voting in this. I think I disagree with him. I think it's going to be a very difficult road stop for Breck. Uh, this Jacksboro team is uh, going to be difficult. 
And they're always tough at home, but this is a veteran team that they're playing. I like, uh, I like Jack's pro to win. Yeah, at some point you and I are going to disagree on here, but uh, this will not be that pick. I, I agree with you. I think the Jacks pro has just got a little bit too much. They're a team that's oh, been – What are you talking about? Better. You and I haven't disagreed in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. But, uh, uh, but I think that it's just Jacks pro teams. They've been running that same system for a long time with a lot of success. And this Breckenridge team, A, lost a, a big class to graduation. B, has a new coach. I think that it's going to take them some time to transition and to kind of, uh, kind of grow and gel. And I think this is just a tough first matchup for that type of team. So I, I like Jacksboro in this one as well. But uh, I, I am excited to see what Coach Pierce can do with this Breckenridge team. I think that this is a team that, uh, uh, that, that will need a little bit of time, like I said, to kind, of, to kind of get where it's going. But it should be a fun season to watch uh, in, as they transition and, and, and as they improve throughout the course of the year. All right, also in Class 3A, we got the early Longhorns visiting the Bangs Dragons, a big area rivalry game uh, right up the road from each other. And more than 200 votes are in in our Twitter poll at this point, and the Dragons are the pick at 58.3%. I agree with that, Dan. I like this Bangs football team. as a, uh, I think they're going to be a playoff team. I think they're going to be exciting offensively. they got a lot of experience back. And Coach Maxfield has uh, – what I think is going to be the best Bangs team that we've seen in seven or eight years. Again, we agree. I think that this, that this Bangs team has a chance like for Sand, to be one of the big country's big surprises. I think this team made massive strides last year in getting to the playoffs. Uh, and this year they bring so much back and they even uh, add, add a couple of pieces that are really intriguing with, Obviously, you have Ethan Sanchez, the running back, uh, uh, who's been a thousand yard rusher each of the last two years. He's back. He'll be leading the offense. But then they got a transfer quarterback in Ethan Cortez, who some of our uh, uh, audience may remember. He, he, he quarterbacked the Big Spring Steers as a sophomore, left last year. His dad's a coach. So he left last year and, and quarterbacked Farmersville. Now he's going to Bangs for his fourth high school in four years. But uh, he's a kid that can really throw the football. So it's going to be fun to watch because obviously when you've got Ethan Sanchez in that running game, and now you add a passing component to it with, with, with Ethan Cortez, that's going to be a, a really explosive offense. But one, and so I, th I do think that they're going to have a little bit too much for early at this point in the season. But I am excited to see what this early team can do as well. And talking with Coach uh, Daniel Price before the season, he's took over the, the program for Blake Sanford over the offseason. He's excited about this group. They don't bring back a whole lot, but he, he thinks they've got a chance to really compete for a playoff spot. And I'm, I'm eager to see kind of what they look like early in the season and see if maybe they can do that. Because I think that this program is one that, that is starving for that, for sure. All right, let's take a look at uh, a Class 4A matchup. And this is a big matchup, Brownwood at Lampasas. And this Lampasas football team is ranked in the top 10 by uh, Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine preseason. Brownwood, in my opinion, is going to be slightly underrated. I think they lost a lot of skill people, and I think a lot of uh, people are going to be looking, taking a look at them really quickly and going, you know, well, man, they lost this guy, they lost that guy, but they're going to be huge up front. Dan, they're going to have a very good offensive line, perhaps the best Class 4A offensive line in the area, maybe even the best offensive line in the area. They're going to get a push up front, so I think they're going to be maybe a little bit underrated. This is going to be a pretty good football team in a, in a monstrous district. Right now, the Twitter pick uh, at 233 votes are in, and Brownwood is a 63.1% favorite to win at Lampasas. Maybe a little home cooking on that poll. I disagree with it. I do think the Lions are underdogs considering the competition and, and the locale. That's going to be a tough place to win. Yeah, and again, we agree. But I think that, that this, this Lampasas team is just going to be a little bit too much for this Brownwood team at this point in the season. I, I, I agree with you. I think this Brownwood team, by the end of the season, will be playing really good football. But I think they're going to go through some growing pains early as some of those young skilled players step in there and kind of, uh, kind of, you know, kind of find their footing. So this is a tough game to do that in. You're talking about a team that won, I think, 13 games last year, brings back quite a bit from that team. Uh, I think this is just going to be a, a tough one for Brownwood. I got Lampasas winning. But I do, I do think that, that Brownwood, by the end of the season, will be, like you said, a, quality, a really quality football team. All right, remaining in Class 4A, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Vernon at Big Spring, and there's, there's a lot of actually, there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement on this poll for this football game, which I find interesting. More than 320 votes are in on this. Uh, Vernon, which has had a lot of success, uh, you know, over the years, facing a, a Big Spring team that's expecting to, you know, take a step forward this year. And right now, the Twitter poll has them at a uh, as, a, as the favorite, Big Spring at a 56%. Uh, choice to win that ball game. I still think that Vernon is a slight favorite here. Um, 
I don't know that Big Spring is going to take that big of a step forward. I like Vernon to win, but I think the ball game is going to be closer than a lot of people expect. I'm going to go with uh, Big Spring. We finally disagree on one. I think that this Vernon program has had a lot of success over the years, but they've kind of fallen on tough times lately. Uh, I think this is going to be a really good first matchup for Big Spring. I know that Coach McWilliams out there thinks he's got an improved team. Uh, and quarterback Gabriel Baiza was a guy who was able to get his, his feet wet last year as a sophomore start most of the season. I think you're going to see him take a massive step forward in their offense. And then, I, so I think if, if they can get the offense going, uh, they've got some, some talent back on the defensive side of the football. I, I like this big spring team. I think that they're going to have a chance to, to make some, uh, take some strides. And I think this is the perfect opener for them. Uh, I think they've got a chance to, to get them a win. And I, I think they will. All right, let's move on to an interclass matchup. Texas win. That is uh, based out of Waco facing Heiko and Heiko should take a step forward this year, Dan. Uh, opening uh, against a, 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 a young football program that is just putting things together. They're at home. I like the Tigers to open with a win. I do too, and I think this will be an opportunity for Heiko to, to snap a long losing streak, a chance for that team to gain some confidence, and I think uh, that it will be a, a good opportunity for this team to really kind of get things started on the right foot. In that district, heiko has got a, a pretty good opportunity to make the playoffs this year. If they can get some momentum going, and, uh, and kind of get some confidence going. I think that this team will take steps forward, and this will be a, a big chance for them to do that. I like Heiko to get the win in their opener. And, uh, this, to me, is really an interesting game. Uh, I like this matchup. I think it's going to be a fun game, and it's going to be an, a game with a lot of intrigue in it. The Anson Tigers are going to be heading out to winners to face the Blizzards on the road in, uh, in a game that really – you want to talk about a contrast of styles. Anson, you know, Anson's going to be going up tempo and, you know, throwing the football, spreading the field, throwing the football quite a bit. Uh, Winters is going to slow things down with their flex bone and try to control the clock uh, and, you know, and, and just kind of ground and pound it. And they're good at it. And I think that really the team that can impose its will on the other one really can control the tempo of the game. If the game is, you know, if Anson gets up on winners, winners going to be, you know, that's going to be a problem for that football team. But conversely, the opposite is true. If winners with that flex bone is moving the ball and they get up on Anson, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Anson to come back because it's not going to have that many possessions to do it. So it really it's going to be who can impose their will and control that clock to their liking. I'm going to go with Anson on the road in this one. Um, we'll see. But they do have to have good quarterbacking in order to pull it off. Yeah, and you and I are pretty much on the same page on this one as well. I think that the, the winner of this one will largely be uh, decided by who's able to kind of, you know, dictate the style and pace of the game. I think Anson at this stage will be a little bit uh, more equipped to do that. But I do like this Winters team as well. I think if, if Alex Salas can take a step forward at the quarterback position, watch out because he is a great athlete. Uh, he, he told me he feels a lot more comfortable in that offense now. Uh, he could be a really good one, and if, if 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 they are able to get that offense rolling this year, I think that 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 that'll be a, a dangerous team, and it could be as I mean that could be the case as early as as week one. If if they can get that offense rolling, getting first downs, chewing up the clock, it, I, they can frustrate Anson. There's the Winters can certainly win this game. I just think Anson's probably a little bit ahead of them right at this stage, but it, it should be a really fun game. This is, I think is one of the more intriguing games on this week's slate. All right, let's move on to another interclass matchup. Class 3A, Slayton coming down from the north to face Snyder uh, at Tiger Stadium in Snyder. Last year, I think Slayton would have been the pick. But this year, I think Snyder's going to take a step, you know, a step forward. They're at home. They've got better numbers in Slayton. It's going to be a close football game, but I'm going to take the Tigers to win. Yeah, I, I, I struggled with this pick a little bit. I kind of went back and forth, but I, I ended in the same place you did. I think that the Snyder team – in Coach Westwood's second year, will be dramatically improved. They got some playmakers back, some kids that did nice things for them last year and showed pretty dramatic improvement over the course of the season. I think making it to the playoffs last year was a really big deal for them. They had to get a couple of big wins to do it. So I think they're going to bring a lot of positive experience, a lot of positive momentum into this season. And I think that they're going to be able to to get the win here against Slayton. And, uh, and that could lead to some big things this year. I think that, that Snyder's got a chance to be a surprise team as well. And then I like the, uh, the energy that, that, Coach West, that Coach Wood brings to that program. I think that's a program on the rise. All right, Dan, let's take a look at a Class 2A matchup. The Coleman Blue Cats on the road facing Miles. I think this is a favorable matchup for the Blue Cats, who will, in my opinion, be a playoff football team this year and take a step forward. Uh, I, like their, uh, I like them in this matchup to win big. They've got bigger numbers. They've got bigger kids. The Blue Cats big. 
Okay, and I think we actually disagree on this one as well. I, th I think that Coleman – I agree with everything you said about Coleman. I think they will be dramatically improved this year. I think that's a playoff team. But I think this Miles team, uh, with what they bring back, they bring a lot of talent back from a team that actually took a big step forward last year, winning seven games. And I think that they're just a little bit ahead of where Coleman is right now. But I think uh, had this – you know, if you played this matchup at the end of the season, I'd probably be there with you. I think that Coleman will, will ultimately end up being the better team. But I, I like the, what this Miles team brings back. Uh, so I give them a slight edge. I think it will be a very – I think it will be a close game. I think they'll win it, uh, win it close. All right, moving on to you, Class 2A. Colorado City is going to be taking on Albany on the road, taking on the perennial power Lions. Uh, uh, you know, in, in their den, that's never going to be easy. And this is going to be still a young football team from Sea City that's going to be taking these guys on. I think Albany is a big pick here to win. Yeah, you and I agree here. I think uh, that Albany is just going to have um, too much talent for this Colorado City team, which, like you said, still is very young. They still don't have a whole lot of depth. There aren't a lot of players on that roster. But I do think you're going to see an improved Colorado City team. I think you're going to see a team that is much more competitive than they were last year. This is just a tough matchup when you're talking about Coach Denny Faith and a program that just uh, reloads each and every year. Uh, this is going to be a tough opener for Colorado City. I expect Albany to win big, but I do expect Colorado City to be to be fairly dramatically improved. Whether that means they can they can earn a playoff spot or not, we'll see. It's still going to be tough in that district, but I do think you're going to see a far more competitive Colorado City team, just probably not this first week. All right, moving on to a Class 3A matchup. The Merkle Badgers are going to be on the road facing uh, Reagan County. And I'm excited to see what this, this new Merkel offense under Coach Hart can do. Uh, it is a uh, – I know you're not a fan of the wing T or a huge fan of it. I am, but this is sort of a, a hodgepodge between what you like and what I like. It's a mixture of wing T, but it's up-tempo, and they throw the football. It's, it's their goal to throw the football as often as 50% of the time. They want, they want to strike a balance between running and passing, but it is a wing T-based offense that they run up-tempo. Yeah, I actually don't mind the wing tee. I think it's an interesting offense, especially when you can pass out of it. I think that it becomes really dangerous at that point uh, because uh, unlike a lot of those run-based offenses, there, there, is a, there can be more of a passing element. And when you have a quarterback that's capable of, of getting the, the ball through the air to receivers, I think that that becomes a dangerous offense. But one thing I like about uh, what, what some coaches have done in the recent past, and you've seen it some with Brady, is, is you've seen coaches run a lot of wing tee concepts out of more modern looks. At Brady, they were kind of running a wing, a gun wing tee or a pistol wing tee. And it sounds like that's kind of what, uh, what, what Coach Hart's going to be doing at Merkel a little bit, running a lot of screens and, and doing some interesting things out of the wing tee that way. So I'm excited to see what they can do. And I think this is about the perfect opener for them uh, against a, kind of a struggling Reagan County program. I think this is an opportunity for them to win uh, and probably win big and a chance to get some momentum and some, some, uh, some, you know, just some positive vibes out there. Uh, coach Hart is their third coach in three years. I think, uh, I think this will be an opportunity for them to, to kind of, uh, kind of build some stability, get some positive momentum going and, uh, and it should be fun. I think you and I are both pretty excited to see what, what coach Hart can do out there. He had a ton of success at Falls city. And I think we both feel that uh, that was a phenomenal hire for Merkel. And it's going to be fun to watch what they can do. Uh, and, and this, I think, is a chance for them to get started with a win. And they scored a ton of points out there at Ball City. I think it's going to be fun to see. They, now, now, granted, they had a ton of talent out there at Ball City. Uh, but it's going to be fun to see what Merkel can do with this new offense because it's going to be tough to stop. And, you know, if they start executing it and get it down, it's going to be tough to stop. And they do have some kids that have some speed out there. Uh, the Merkel uh, Badgers are a 68.6% pick by our Twitter poll to win. And I agree with that. Uh, I agree with that choice. I think the Badgers will win on the road. All right, moving on to our Class 2A matchup. And we welcome the Santo Wildcats to our coverage area. This is the first year that we have covered them. And so welcome aboard. We've got Rio Vista at Santo. The Wildcats playing host to Rio Vista. The Twitter poll with 188 votes at this point has Santo as a 63.3% favorite. I agree with that uh, with that pick by the general public. I'm taking the Wildcats to win it home. I'm doing the same thing. I think the Santo team is very young, but there's a lot of talent on that team. Some sophomores and juniors that are really good players uh, that are going to be fun to watch grow. There's not a whole lot of experience there, but there, there are some kids, I think, with, with real playmaking ability. And this, I think, is a good opener for that type of team. This Rio Vista program has struggled in the recent past, so I think Santo is going to get a chance where the margin for error is, is a little bit larger than maybe if they were playing a tougher team in their opener. I think it's going to be a chance for, for some of those young kids to, to experience some success, to gain some confidence, and really get the, the season started off on the right foot. But I know Coach Mann out there is excited about this team. Even though it is young, I think he, he expects there to be some growing pains early. 
but he thinks that by the time this team hits district, that it'll be a, a tough team. And I agree. I think this is the type of game that'll help them get to that point. All right, let's move on to an interclass matchup. De Leon at Dublin. This is a couple of area rivals, not too far apart. Twitter has more than 300 votes on this ball game, and that's not surprising since the two towns are, you know, in fairly close proximity. That's sort of a rivalry game. Dublin is the pick right now at 51.8%. There's a side note on this ball game. This is going to be the first game ever at Bob Savetto Stadium. Could the Lions lose their opener at Bob Cervetto Stadium? Is that possible, Dan? I'm going to take the Lions to win. Could, could they lose? I think yes. I think this De Leon team is an intriguing team. They've lost some significant playmakers from last year's group, but they're going to be a year more experienced in that uh, in that system. And I think they've got some interesting talent at, at key positions on the lines and in some different places. Uh, they had a quarterback who was able to get some experience last year. So I think this will be a competitive game because you've got a couple of teams that uh, – that are both kind of building. So I think this could be a competitive game, but I tend to agree with you. I think that, that Dublin has a little bit bigger numbers. I think they're maybe a little bit bigger up front. I think that uh, this will be an opportunity for Coach Bob Cervetto to, to get a win in his, in his new stadium. And uh, it should be a fun game, though. I'm expecting a very competitive one between two programs that I think will be a lot better by week 10 than they are in week one. All right, let's take a look at the top matchups of the week as we see them. We'll start off with an interclass matchup. Clyde uh, taking on Cisco at the graveyard at Chesley Field in Cisco. This is going to be a young Clyde ball club, but they do have uh, a bigger football team with more numbers. They're just younger uh, overall, I think, than this Cisco team. It's going to be a tough matchup for the, for the Bulldogs to pull off. I like Cisco to win, Dan. Uh, and Twitter also agrees with me at 75.5% with nearly 300 votes in. Yeah, I think this is a this is going to be a tough matchup for Clyde, just given the fact that they've got so many new faces. They, they only returned two starters from that excellent defense last year, and offensively, they're they're going to be young as well in, in, at the skill positions, with the exception of quarterback Dylan Newman, who's in his third year as starter, and they're going to be leaning really heavy heavily on him to make plays. So that'll be fun to watch. You could see their offense open up some, because I think their offense is going to have to lead the way, especially early. But this is a tough. Uh, first assignment. Yes, Cisco has a new coach, and that'll be interesting to watch. But I think Cisco is still Cisco. It's gonna, they're going to look virtually identical to what they have in the past. They're still going to be a really tough football team, and this is a really tough assignment, I think, for Clyde. But uh, this shouldn't discourage Clyde if they do come out of this one with a loss, as we are expecting. I think that this is another team that will grow tremendously over the course of the season. All right, moving on to a Class 3A matchup. And this is a big matchup, Dan. Uh, the Brock Eagles are going to be facing Bushland on the road, and this is going to be a rematch of a playoff matchup from a year ago. Twitter has Brock as an overwhelming favorite at 89.9%. I think that's a bit high. I don't think it's going to be I – mean, it shouldn't be that lopsided. This is a very good Bushland team that Brock is facing on the road. 260 votes are in on that poll if you look at it. Although I do agree with the pick. I think that Brock is the choice to win. This is going to be a uh, perhaps a top five football team at the Class 3A level that we could very well be seeing in Arlington later on down the road. Yeah, I think this may be one of the most intriguing matchups in the state at any classification. You're talking about two teams with legitimate, you know, region title, uh, you know, uh, capabilities. You're talking about two very, very good football teams. I tend to agree. I think Brock, this Brock team has a little bit too much back this year, uh, even for a team as good as Bushland. So I think Brock will get off to, uh, to, to a 1-0 start. But this is a huge, huge matchup. Two teams that are just, uh, you know, excellent teams. And it should be a really fun one to watch uh, for those in attendance. These, these are going to be two very good football teams and two that you could – I mean, this could be, like you said, uh, a matchup that we see in the playoffs again. So this could be the first of two matchups between these two teams, and it'll be uh, fun to see how much the teams have grown if that does come to pass. All right, moving on to a Class 3A matchup that, that I find personally you know, as, as one of the most interesting ball games of the week. Ballinger at Jim Ned. This is going to be – uh, one of the better Ballinger teams that we've seen in a few years, taking on a proven commodity now, Jim Ned at home. Uh, a tough choice. Um, right now, the Twitter poll at 308 votes has Jim Ned at 73.7%. I think that uh, that disparity is too big. This is a better Ballinger team than that. This is a team that could very well win this ball game. However, this is a tough pick. I'm going to go. I'm going to agree with the pick from Twitter. I think that, that Jim Ned at home is going to be a very slight favorite, but this game really is not, isn't really much more than a coin flip, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree, and I actually landed on the other side of that coin. I think that this Ballinger team, with the experience they have back from what was a very good football team last year, this is a team that went into its district matchup with Cisco 
as, as a district title contender at that time uh, last year. That, and they bring most of that team back, including uh, a quarterback in Tyler Vaughn, who was able to get a lot of experience at that position last year. And, and I think this is a team with a lot of weapons on both sides of the football. And uh, I think it's going to be a tough test for a Jim Ned team that has some, some big pieces to replace. I think Jim Ned will be very good this year again. I mean, I think you're going to see – I think that, that, that program has gotten to the point where, where you expect them to be competitive year in and year out. So I, I expect this to be a tough game, and I could easily see Jim Ned winning it. But I think this Ballinger team, with what they have back, I give them a slight edge. I think that you're going to see this team kind of hit the ground running. They're, the expectations in that program right now – are really high. The excitement level is really high. I think they understand that they've got something pretty special building right there. They're ranked number the 13 in the state to start the season. I think it's going to be a fun matchup, and uh, I'm actually going to go against the, the Twitter pick on this one, and I'm going to go with the Bearcats to get the, the big win in what I think we both agree is a really fun, high-profile game. All right. Now, this this ball game here, some people may view this as a, uh, as a bit lopsided. We've got Comanche taking on a uh, perennial power, Mason, but this is going to be a very good – Manchi football team. This is going to be one of the better offensive lines that they, it's going to be a very quick offensive line. I like this Comanche team. And when they have that, that experienced quick offensive line, generally Stephen Hermsmeyer puts together very good football teams. This is going to be a playoff team in Comanche at a higher level than Mason plays at. I still think that Mason's is the pick and Twitter has them as a 70.9% favorite to win the football game. I agree with the pick. Mason is the choice. But if Comanche can execute that offense, and this can be a wing T versus wing T matchup is one thing. If both teams are executing fairly well, how many, how many total possessions are we going to see in this football game? Very few. And that's going to dictate a close, low-scoring ball game. Mason's the pick, but I think it's going to be a close game. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm picking Mason probably about two scores. I think Mason's just got a little bit too much for Comanche. But I, I think that this is one of those games that you look at and even though it's a likely loss for the Indians, I think this is going to be a really good game for them. Because I think we both agree that this Comanche team is going to be dramatically improved this year. I think this team, this team's got a chance to be another one of those that's kind of a surprise team. They've all, they're always competitive under Coach Hermes, but I think they've got a chance maybe to compete for a district title by the end of the season. So I, I think that this team is, is definitely dangerous. I just think when you're talking about a Mason, which is a perennial state power, that's, that's kind of a tall order. But regardless of what happens in this game, win or loss, I think it's going to be a good one for both teams. And uh, I think that uh, this Comanche team is going to be fun to watch really all year. I think they've got a lot of weapons. They've got uh, some strength on that line, a lot of experience. It's going to be a fun one to watch. I just think that Mason's probably got a little bit too much for them at this point in the season. Okay, now this game, this next matchup, a Class 4A matchup, is a big one. It's going to be a fun one. You're going to be on hand at the Mustang Bowl for this ball game. Stephenville taking on what we view as a much improved young Sweetwater team with a, a talented nucleus of juniors that's been really playing varsity football since they were freshmen. Uh, they've got a lot of skill back, Sweetwater does. They've got most of their defense back. They're going to be playing at home in front of huge, a huge crowd against a very good Stephenville team. Should be a fun night, Dan. The, the Twitter poll right now, as you can see, has got uh, Stephenville as a 72.5% favorite. I agree with the pick, but I think that that's the, the, the spread, the disparity there is a little bit big. I think Sweetwater is going to surprise the area this year and be a very explosive, fun team. This should be a fun night, a great ball game. I'll go with the Jackets. Yeah, it's, it's funny that this one follows that Mason-Comanche game because you mentioned how that one's going to be a low-scoring game with a, with a handful of possessions. This is going to be the exact opposite. This will be uh, fireworks, a ton of possessions for both teams. I mean, I think you could see both teams score in the high 30s or 40s, and it's, it's going to be a shootout, a classic, you know, 4A shootout. And I, I'm really excited about it. I tend to agree. I think that Steve, that Steamville's probably got just a little bit too much for Sweetwater at this point. Uh, but I think you're going to see the Mustang offense uh, in, in really all of its strength. I think you're going to see they're, – they're going to score on Stephenville. I'm just not sure they can stop the Jackets offense enough to come out with a win. But this is a night uh, in a game that I think uh, you and I are both really excited about. This is going to be an opportunity to see just how much this, Steven, this Sweetwater team has improved because I think we both think that this team's got a chance to do some really special things this year. And it's also going to be an opportunity for Stephenville to kind of, kind of show where they stand and kind of their strength because this Sweetwater team does have a lot of weapons. So – that to go on the road and have to uh, have to play that type of team in an opener is a big challenge. So I'm excited about this, but I'm going to give Stephenville a slight edge. But I'm expecting a very high scoring game, a very tough game to stat. That one's the, that's a tough opener for me <laughs> to have to try to stat that game. But you're going to shake the ring rust, and so you always have ring rust in that season opener. And you're going to face, you know, you got that ball game. That's going to be tough. To, that's tough to stat on week ten. Not much, much less week one. 
Well, I'm, I'm one of those guys that, that I jump into the swimming pool. I, I don't get to, you know, I, I want to get it out of the way first. So this is the, the perfect opportunity for that. To, to I'm, I'm going to be, uh, by, by the third quarter, I'm going to be, uh, you know, back in uh, back in full swing. So I'm excited about this. It's going to be a really fun game. And uh, I think these two teams are going to be a lot of fun to watch really all year. And uh, to have them matching up in the first week, I thought that was one of those games when I saw it on the schedule, I was really excited about. And I'm excited that we're finally here and going to get a chance to cover it. All right, let's move on to the Big Country Preps game of the week. Dan, we got the Wall Hawks, a ball club that you like and think might be a vintage Wall Hawks team, facing Eastland on the road with uh, Texas Tech bound quarterback Baron Morton. Right now, the Twitter poll shows Wall is a 69.4% favorite. I, I agree with the pick. I think that Wall is the favorite. However, uh, this Eastland ball club is loaded with skill, Dan, and if they get a push up front for this young offensive line, there's no telling – how, you know, there's no telling how many points this team's going to be able to put up. And this is not going to be an easy venue for Wall to win it. No, this will be, I think, a, a, real, a good competitive game. Uh, but we've kind of had a, a, an idea of how this one, I think, will go by what we've seen the last couple of years when those two were district mates. I think that, that Wall, I think, has a team that's every bit as good as what they put on the field each of the last two years. And I think Eason will be will be very good again, but I think that Wall's just going to be a little bit too much for them. Eastland has traditionally had trouble, you know, like you said, putting up you know big numbers against Wall because virtually everyone has big tr trouble putting up big numbers against Wall. And this defense, I think, has enough playmakers back that it's going to look like like a, a vintage Wall team. And then offensively, they've got uh, a lot of guys who can really run the football. They've got a quarterback who got some experience last year uh, at the end of the season, and uh, I think that that this Wall team has a chance to to they're one of those teams I think has a chance to really contend for a region title with the Brocks, with the Bushlands, and with some of those other teams. So uh, I think the Cecil team will be very good. I think by the end of the year, they're going to make their own really good playoff run. I just think that Wall's a little bit ahead of them to start the season. And I think it's going to be a tough matchup, even at home. It's going to be a tough, uh, a tough order to beat this Wall squad. This is going to be a very good Eastland team if that offensive line gels. If that offensive line can get a push up front, we're looking at a team that's going to score – uh, a ton of points. They've got receivers all over the field. They've got fielding in the background, or, you know, in the backfield that can, you know, give them a power element. And of course, Baron Morton is there. But the offensive line is going to be the key. They're going to score a lot of points, you know, anyway. But that offensive line is going to be the key to get them over the hump and beat, you know, football teams like this Wild Ball Club. That's what's going to be the determining factor on how far they go in the playoffs, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, and I like this game for, for really both teams, regardless of what happens, but, but for Eastland in particular, because uh, now that they've dropped to Division Two, I think these are the types of teams you want to face in that non-district to get ready for district and to get ready for a deep playoff run. I think every, everyone is expecting a lot from this Eastland team. I think we all think they've got a chance to make a really nice run, and I think that this experience, whether they win or lose the game, will be really valuable you know, once they get to district and once they get into the playoffs, because these are the types of teams they'd be facing, you know, in the third or fourth round of the playoffs. And if they can go get out to a strong start, get, be competitive against them, uh, I think that that tells you kind of the capabilities that they have. But I think these are two very good teams. It's the Big Country Preps game of the week for the reason. This is a fun matchup. It's going to be a really exciting one of contrasting styles. And uh, I, I think you've got a good one to watch this week as well. All right. That's just about going to wrap it up for our Capital Farm Credit and Wednesday night podcast. But there's a few things we want to remind you about. Uh, first off, these Twitter polls that we're, that we're showing the results from, these are posted every Monday night at 8 o'clock uh, at Big Country Sport. That's the, uh, the web address for our Twitter account, at Big Country Sport. Please join us and please vote and retweet these things to, to get a, a broader cross-section uh, of results for each pick. That uh, We would appreciate that if you would do that. And we want to remind you that we've also got three different subscription packages here at BigCountryPreps.com. We've got a monthly for five bucks a month. We've got a semi-annual if you want to sign up for six months for four bucks a month. And we've got an annual that we knocked the price down to three bucks a month, 36 bucks for a full year of Big Country High School Athletic Cup. And with a new school year starting, I want to remind you we will be taking a whole lot of pictures. And if you ever see a photo in any one of our galleries that you like, it is available for just $7. You can just click on that small shopping cart icon to the bottom right follow the prompt and purchase as many of those as you would like. But uh, as I said before, we take a lot of photos and that's something we are very proud of here at BigCountryPreps.com. All big country, all high school, all the time. Welcome home.